Hello there, ADC21. My name is Thorsten Sideboard and this talk is REPL REPL, a new interface for algorithmic music. I'm going to be speaking about and demonstrating software I've been working on for the past few years called Soundboard, or SB Shell. Let us fire it up. Move my webcam out the way. Okay. Yeah, so a soundboard it is an interactive text-based interface for making music and a live programming language for um, controlling these instruments that we can create. It's a standard programming type language. We can assign to variables. Oh, it'd help if I could type. Um, standard things as you would expect. It has booleans, for loops, conditionals, uh, first class functions, and yeah, uh, let, let's see. So um, first class functions are pretty useful. Let's create add five. It's a function which takes a variable and it returns that variable with five. Unsurprisingly, at five we can call this with our other variables. We can call it recursively. Nothing too out of the ordinary here. What is different from normal programming languages is that it has inbuilt instruments couple of different synthesizers, subtractive synth based on a mini Moog, FM synth based on a DX100, granular synth inspired by Robert Henke's Granulator 2 from Ableton. Um, let's create one of them. Uh, we'll create an FM synth, we'll call it DX. So FM is the command to create our FM synth. And we'll assign this to a variable called DX and to see your way around this very much based upon the sort of Unix interface as well we have a command ps which is process status from Unix and it's very similar here run ps we get our header um, we have various information about the mixer itself the volume we're running at BPM we're running at this is more information we can't change this this is the loop length in MIDI ticks um, which is pretty useful to know because we can program against that and a uh, number of peers this comes from Ableton link which is incorporated here which means you can sort of jam with other versions of other copies of soundboard running on the same network or other people with Ableton live if you're on the same network and you both have Ableton link enabled um, it Ableton link uses multicast and you can discover other users on the same network and it will handle your BPM synchronization and your phase drift within that BPM itself. You'll see a number of different variables we've created here. We have our Y um, that we created, our X that we created, and our DX synth which we created. You will also notice these other variables which exist and we didn't seem to create them these are, as you can probably guess, these are rhythms, 16 steps, 16-step uh, array with ones donating the onset of a hit. Um, and beyond the variables, we will also see um, a proc down here, process. And I'll explain them more as we move along. But a process, basically, we can create and assign to these process slots a process which will run in the background that's, that's a program that we can create and it will continue doing work so we can now create a process which would be perhaps generating playing the melody on a synth while we are busy programming something else um, we can we'll get into all of that um, let's see so we have our DX and oh, running PS here we don't see too much information about this we just see the volume that's pan setting and the algorithm that's running Info is a command where we can get a bit more, so we can run info dx here, and we can see this would be if you had a, a UI 
graphical UI or you were looking at a real synth, this is sort of more what you would see. The top part here with the voice section, which is your kind of overall control of the synth itself. We have algos. I'll show I'll go into that a bit more in a detail in a second. We're running at algo one. We have things like portamento, we have the pitch range, op four feedback, legato, various different synthesizer options more. Now an FM synth, um, not the, the DX100, the architecture of it, has this concept of operators, and an operator is quite simple. It's basically an oscillator with its own envelope generator. And so the operator one here, we have the, 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 the wave shape of the actual oscillator itself set to a square wave, ratio and detuning, and uh, the, the second line here is the envelope setting. So we have attack, decay, sustain, release. And we have four operators. And um, we have LFO routing down here, the LFO. One LFO, which has four destination slots, um, can go to the amplitude modulation, or it can do vibrato, or none. And these th these four slots can be assigned to any of these different operators. Let me uh, explain more about this algos. This is a diagram from a real DX100. Um, shows you here that one is the, like, so here's the eight different algorithms which come with it. And what this refers to is the four different operators we have, and it's how these are all chained together. The top four algorithms here have one carrier, which is the operator one. Uh, this is where the sound goes out. And the uh, the other operators are basically modulating the carrier frequency of operator one. And so these are wrapped in various different methods. Um, one to four, actually I had an, an interesting page earlier which had a nice description. Algorithms one, two, three, and four. They're, these are all single carrier algorithms providing the most complex FM modulation. They're best for pluck strings, guitar, harp, bass, harpsichord, etc., hammered strings, reed wind instruments, woodwinds, and conventional synthesizer type voices. Algorithm three is a good choice for programming bowed strings as well as some horns and brass voices. Algorithm five, uh, you can see here, that it's got this kind of dual, one and three are both on the bottom. So this one has this dual carrier algorithm has two separate FM modulation stacks. This lets you create voices with two distinct voice elements. Goes on. Algorithm six has three carriers, um, all modulated at the same time by a single modulator. It is useful for brass, horns, etc. And algorithm seven and eight, these have three and four carriers respectively. Both of these algorithms are best suited for creating smooth, gentle voices. And Maybe I'm going to stick with just this the same the current voice it's at the preset is called Raver at the moment and Perhaps if we have time later we can start adjusting some of these operators and getting some different voices from them Now that we have the instrument uh, the most basic command is a note on And you give it the the instrument name DX and then you can give it a MIDI value which to play a note Nice fat bass there. There's an inbuilt command here, MIDI ref, and this is more just informational. Um, MIDI notes go from 0 to 127, um, starting from C, uh, that'd be exceptionally low C on 0. Middle C is one above here, it'd be 60. Um, this is just randomly octave three. I just sort of chose one octave, and you can you can sort of see the range. And to go up or down from there, you can just um, to go up or down octave, you can just add or subtract twelve from them. Another piece of information for my own use here is chord progressions, and I think we'll actually use them soon as well. So yes, note on. We could do a DX. We could give it C three here, forty eight. Um. 24th, we want to come down, middle C, quite high there. Um, yeah, let's start with... We can further adjust note on, we can give it a duration. I think the default is about 100, no, maybe even a bit more. Longer tail on there, and we have velocity as well. So the default that I've got it set for is 127, so this should be the same. 
bring down that duration again. Uh, velocity, you can play around with this, so like uh, bring that lower, a bit quieter, etc, etc. And I mentioned the MIDI pulses. Once we actually start getting into programming, if you want to program over a bar as opposed to playing instantly, we have a note on at command, give it the MIDI note, and then you can actually give it a value of when it should play in MIDI ticks. Um, 240 would be in 1 16th of a time. So there's a 16th of a gap there. Um, longer. You get the idea. Well, maybe you don't get the idea, but we'll, we'll have more demonstrations of that. So instruments and MIDI notes are our main vocabulary here. Now there are some other functions, some of them are inbuilt and some of them are just ones I programmed and I have stored for further use. I see the MIDI ref again. So let's start with this C3, um, MIDI value 48. There's an inbuilt command, notes in key. This could perhaps be called scale better if you call it. Um, we're going to call it with 48 here, and what this will do is give us back, we're passing in a root note here, so we're passing in C, so it's going to be the and a C scale starting from C, and it's going to give us a major scale, so that's the 48, 50, 52, 53, 55, etc. There's another inbuilt command here, which is play array, and you can basically we give it our sound generator, we'll say notes in key, we'll give it that, and what this will do, play array, we'll take in your array, uh, there are seven values here, it will space those seven values evenly over a measure, so this will basically play our scale for us. <laughs> notes in key by default gives you back a major scale, uh, that the default is a zero, this should give us the same. We can get back a minor scale with, and um, actually I really should add in a pentatonic, but um, that's not in there at the moment, but easy enough to add. So that, that gives us a scale, that's pretty good. We can also do notes in chord, if we want a, a C chord, we'll stick with this middle, or C3. And we can see here we get the C, we get the E, and we get the G. I just double check, yes, there we are, E52, and G is 55, so we get a C chord. And we can note on, also we'll accept an array, so we can um, we can pass in this value. We get a C chord, and we can do a minor. We can also do an augmented and what that basically does is that's playing a, a seventh on top of that as well. Um, I'll just show you that. So we actually get four. Two cats running around in the background here. Probably going to knock over some chasing each other. Um, yeah, we get rather than the, the three notes in our chord, we actually get the augmented with the fourth and that's on, a, on the seventh. What else do we have? Um, Notes in key, notes in chord. They're the most useful ones I want to show at the moment. Now, what about rhythms? Now, we see these rhythms. That's one thing. And there's another inbuilt inbuilt command here. What's um? Let me remember them. Combiner. If we give it an array, um, let me see first. Play array, DX, and we'll say bottom. Now, th these are MIDI values that you want to pass them through, and the boss is only ones and zeros, so it's rather a bit low. Sounds all right, but it's still pretty low. Uh, this combiner is specifically for combining rhythms with notes. So we pass in the rhythm, and say we wanted notes in key 
what this will do, so we, we've seen we've seen that notes in key if I can spell correctly will give us back this array and that's all the just like a scale of C starting from C3 if we combine that with the rhythm, what it will do is walk through the rhythm and it will replace those one values with values from the array you pass in so rather than ones we get this and that's more useful for a melody let's pass this into the play array wait what's going on there I guess that's still correct perhaps what we'd want maybe more is notes and chord Cool. We can do that, and there are other rhythmic functions which are good. Um, let me see which ones. So there's something called there's a often called Euclidean rhythms, and it's the idea behind it is there's a researcher Bjorklund who. He, was, he had a project where he basically had, there's a number of radio slots and he had messages to pass through them. Um, there's any number of slots and he had a number of messages. This is quite analogous to like a 16-step array and you want those hits of a one being in there. Um, say we wanted five across 16. Gives you back an array of 16 lengths and it puts in those fives and it uses an algorithm which is very similar to the Euclidean algorithm for finding the lowest common denominator. It'll basically start, um, kind of break them down. I, um, the algorithm for this kind of is nice, like it gives you these rhythms which actually seem to work quite well. Let us create a drum rhythm as well. I'll create a drum kick here. Play array BD Bjork five sixteen. So, and there's another we can do this other function rand array, and you <coughs> you say how long you want the rhythm or the array to be, and you can give it a low v starting value and an upper value. Um, by giving it zero and one, we can get something similar to our rhythm again. And this is just randomly selecting between them. So this this can work sometimes. Um, so we have a number of different things. We have the, the Bjorks. In fact, let's do the hi-hats again. Um, I find that hi-hats sound good with a Bjork rhythm of 11 over 16. Combine that with her bass drum playing a Bjork of 5 8. Um, so we have our Bjorks, we have a rand array, and we have, there's actually a rand beat, which basically we just return one of these six pre created ones. So we have a number of different ways of getting rhythms. I mean, you can program any of these yourself. And once, actually, we'll get into opening a text file soon and see how we can program processes more. These are more, basically, I'm walking through building blocks at the moment. <clears throat> so um, we know we know some stuff. We have our scales that we can use, or we can use the uh, chords. We can get the key. We can get the MIDI numbers for chords. We have a number of different ways we can get rhythms, and so there's a couple of inbuilt functions which um, combine some of these fours rather than us having to do it all the time. One of the main things here is the fact that um, anything you come up with, you can then save as another function and like build upon that. Um, so one here is called riff. 
and Roof. Actually, I think if I just show it here, it will do. It will create a beat. It will create one of these Bjork beats by taking a random number between, um, I guess, two and eleven here. Run nine plus two, uh, so you could get up to eleven over the sixteen steps. And whichever root note you pass in here, it will just replace the one with your uh, root note that you're passing in. So it's just going to give you like a single note rhythm. But we can do riff, um, let's take it to 20. And rather than ones, we get back the 20s. Let's try and see how that sounds. Play array DX and we'll do riff 20. And we have a different key riff. Uh, you pass in your root again, and kind of similar to th this is called key riff because it's the notes in key. It'll basically it'll create this. In fact, if I show you again, key riff, it'll take valid notes which are notes in key, which we seen earlier, and it'll just give you your scale back, and it'll do the same with the beat, and it will walk through, um, replace the the beat with one of the notes from the key. So. Key riff 20. Let's see how that sounds. Play array DX key riff. And there's a third variation, which is a chord riff, which could maybe just be called a array riff. Basically, you give it an array. Rather than a single value for the for the root, um, so we could do notes in chord. Um, I'll, I'll go for another C here, and so notes in chord thirty six. We get the three values. So basically, this is just going to walk through, and it's going to randomly select one of your values for your riff. This is good if we actually want to stay within a chord itself and like, just play in a pattern within that chord. Uh, chord. E -E, riff. Notes and chord. It's getting a bit nested. Do I have enough brackets? Chord, riff, notes. <laughs> Cool. So I think that's, let's see how we're doing on time here. 23 minutes. I think we've been through most of the building blocks. So we have our synths, we have our sample players. Um, as I mentioned, there's granular synth and so, but I'm going to stick just with our, I'm going to stick with just our kick drum, our hi hats, and our DX synth for the moment. So the next big thing to show. It's live coding. Um, so let me talk about the, the processes again here. So I've created a new file, sbtracksadc.sb. Over here we can monitor a file, adc.sb. And anything, whenever we save this file, it will get reloaded over here. Let's create a generator. Now, I, I kind of alluded to generators without explaining them earlier. A generator is very similar in concept to how the, the processing environment works, or Arduino, if you've pro programmed any Arduino. And um, what they have is basically two internal functions. One is setup, which is called when it's um, when it's first created, and so we can store state in here. And run gets called um, each time you call the generator. Run will get reevaluated each time. And so that is how we can. Well, let me give a demonstration of it. Um, run, we shall. Play array, hi hats, Bjork, eleven, sixteen, 
I'll kind of recreate what we had working there earlier. Um, 516, I should do for the moment. Um, okay, so now we should have access to this. We can run the command by itself. That sounds quite nice, actually. If we want that to continue running, we can assign it to a process slot. And the way we do that, um, the dollar don donates, uh, denotes a particular um, form of process. And the, the, the dollar one basically means, actually hash and dollar are kind of similar. They, they used to have more of a distinction, which matters less these days. Um, but basically, we'll get called once on every loop. And that works, That's the generators are kind of designed for that. So we can assign the blagen to process slot one. That's just going to keep going. It's not going to change anything for the moment. So I'll just disable that. <coughs> um, let us, we can change it up some. Let lens, let, we'll create an array here. We'll say seven, nine, eleven. Give it an index. What we will do here is instead of having that hard coded eleven, we will do lens LX. So it will start with seven. There's a function I wrote in here and it is called increment. And it's just a standard increment, doesn't do anything you wouldn't expect. But you have a starting value, so LX is our starting value. Um, it has a minimum value, which in this case is actually just zero. We want it to step through all these values. So it would start from zero, and it would go to len of lens. The length of the, the lens array, um, which is three. So basically, the increment will go from zero, one, two, as you would expect, it will walk through. So basically, what will happen here is that the hi-hat pattern will change on every loop. It will kind of iterate through, um, it'll loop through 7, 9, and 11. All right, so let's do something with our... Um, What else? Where can we go from here? So, player A, I've said, I haven't actually shown you too much of that, and we haven't used note on at. Um, let us, instead of using the player A, I'm going to show exactly what that does. Note on at BD. Now, over here, I showed you that PP is 240, which is the 3 at 40 divided by 16. So, that's pulses per 16th note. Over here, I'm going to do note on at. Actually, what I'm going to do is if, again, again, let beat equals Bjork 516. I'm going to delete this guy. We're basically going to recreate this manually. If beat i equals 1, We will do note on at one and the the position is going to be i that's sixteenth times the pulses per. So we're going to walk through sixteen steps. Our beat has sixteen steps up here. If the beat has a one, it will do note on at. It will sound generator. The value it's going to play, now we we also could make that beat i because it's a 1, but it's always going to be the 1. That's not going to change just because we're, um, this is just a drum kick. And that i is going to be the position times the pulses per. I think I have a guest wanting to say hello here. Hello. It's Toti Bum. Uh, okay, so we actually shouldn't notice any difference here. This should sound should sound the same. Uh, 
Let us do something. Let's add in the FM synth now. So MIDI ref shows us some of these chord progressions. Um, one, four, five, kind of simple punk, pop punk chord progression. Um, let's use that. Let I equals, um, what, what key should we go for? Let's, rather than using, to grab a pen and paper here, make sure I'm doing this. Um, let's go for a random key. Let's go for E, so 52, rather than staying with C all the time. So 52, that might actually be kind of high. So let's actually do a 52 minus 24. So we'll, we'll go for 28. So we're going to be in the key of E. Key of E, 28. Right, watch out, cat. And let's see. So notes in key. Let's see if I can remember this correctly. So notes in key. There's our scale of E. So we have 28, 30, 32, 33. 35, 37, 39. Now these correspond to the chord progressions. So we have a major one, we have a major four, we have a major five. So let's make I equals notes in chord. One is 28. And it's major, so we just stick with the default there. So like I, so I is that. Uh, let four equals notes and chord, and that's one, two, three, four. We'll do 33. And we should do five notes in chord, three, four, five, 35. So now, now we have one, four, five. Um, let's get some riffs based upon, so that, that's the chords we want to use. Um, how do we, let's, let I riff equals, um, chord riff. And we're going to pass in the I. Is this, am I correct here? I riff. Okay. Let's create our four riff. And our five riff. Let's uh, see if that works as well. Good, good. Um, over here, let's do our order. So. Our riffs equals I riff, four riff, and five riff. And our, we need an index again so we know which one of these riffs we're on. Now to start with, we should just do, I'll we'll just do a play array, DX, riffs, Rx, and then we shall increment it, Rf equals increment, Rx zero, len, riffs. So it should play our first riff, our second riff, and our next riff. Now in fact, what if we want, let's repeat our I riff, so it plays twice, then it plays a four, then a five. most. I mean, it's alright. We'll see how that goes. And maybe we just want that to happen every second time. So it's not just playing the whole time.
Okay, so let's change some other values in that. So I alluded to that there's other process types. So we have we have one process can run in here, we have, and we're applying this generator to our process slot one. Now there are other types. One thing which will change the sound of our DX synth is the attack here, and I'm going to use operator one because this is, uh, if you remember our DX algorithms, um, we're on algo one and uh, the one carrier for that is operator one and the rest of these all modulate that but basically the you can see our output values here um, operator one is the, the loudest one and this is basically how much modulation is applied from each of these guys let's actually set just so we can let's just switch all of these off so there's no modulation going on um, let's just see how that sounds As I thought, there's like there's not much modulation going on at the moment for that, so we'll, we'll leave them switched off, and we can start adjusting them more. But yes, the attack here um, set to 91 at the moment. That'll make a bit of a change if we change that. Um, so here, process slot two. And we're going to use this less than sign, which denote, denotes a different type of process, and this one we're going to do like an oscillator process and we'll say it should oscillate over 16 bars it should go from the value of 10 to 91 and we are going to apply that to DX um, one thing I didn't mention all of these values here which you can read you can change every one of them by this this is a syntax a set sound generator name the variable name which is DX and then the name of the variable you actually want to change so we're going to change the attack and it's kind of coming like from C we're just going to use this percentage sign which will get switched out for the value where we're currently at between 10 and 91 the, we're not playing anything at the moment so we shouldn't hear it but if you look at the attack value here it's going to keep changing and it's going to basically oscillate between 10 and 91 over that time period of 16 so now if we play Blajan Still getting back up there at was it still sounds similar. You know, start here getting much shorter now. Let us, we can start by, so it's P3. Let's try some other variations. So let's oscillate over eight. We'll change the value from the op two to 90. So we expect us to start modulating more. And so that's it. Oh, where's it going there? And start to get a bit more nasty for sure. We are at 40 minutes. I'm going to call it at that. And any questions, feel free. Um, love to hear them. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thorsten. Are there any questions? Hey, I've got lots of questions about this, so I'll try and choose one. Um, cool. I, I've, I've, I've tried live coding with a few different systems, and it's really, really fun. But I sometimes get sort of a bit stuck in a, you know, in a single loop, or you know, I, I go down a pathway and then I find myself stuck there. I was wondering if you have any like strategies or things that you do to help you kind of get out of those local minima or, or just to change it up as you're, as you're playing. 
The one of the uh, kind of process I've came up with quite recently, which is I've found very interesting for rhythmically, when you've got like a, a a 16 length loop rather than just playing it back to front it's actually playing with the sequencer part so if you're looking through one to 16 there's actually two things you're taking there one of them is the, the time slot and one is the actual value if you actually start changing the length of the loop so you're going to get called you've got to provide back 16 values rather than just going from one or zero to 15. Um, if you bring in a new um variable so you can actually change your loop length so even though you get 16 values you might just go 0 1 2 0 1 2 and then the next loop you change that to like 4 so you get 0 1 2 3 0 1 2 3 and you start getting weird rhythmic cuts going across it i picked this up from a max msp book it was like a adventures and sequencing with max msp and that's a process i discovered pretty recently and suddenly you start sounding like mark fell and it's all like just really weird and glitchy i was like whoa this is my new thing so that's been my biggest thing and um it's just more kind of combining functions more so but that's been my biggest aha moment uh, discovering that <laughs> any other questions here do we have any online Okay, uh, I have a question here. How does this compare to Sony, Sonipi? Is the timer more accurate? Uh, to Sonic Pi? Um, I haven't, um, from what I, I've only watched videos of Sonic Pi. I haven't actually played with it. And it seems, um, from what I did see there, it was speaking more about um, the, the timing before your next onset, which is, um, I found that doesn't quite compute to me. Like a lot of the metaphors that I use come from using Ableton Live. And the actual timing is very accurate in here because it uses the um, Ableton link as the central core of my timing. Um, so it's, it's, it's super accurate there. And it's like basically I'm on that ground, that, that concrete block from Ableton's timing. Uh, so that's actually the core of the timing in this. And it seems super accurate. Um, I've jammed with other people using Ableton link and it's really solid. People, we had um, last, before the pandemic, I had seven friends over here. We we're also alive coding in my living room. Some people were using Ableton Live specifically with a live coding plugin for it. Others were using Tidal Cycles, which has a sort of sidecar that you can also use the Ableton link. And seven of us were all like synchronized, so it perfectly. It was really nice. Um, so I can't say how it compares to Sonic Pi, but it's very solid timing. And I, I don't take the credit for that because that is the core of that timing aspect is handled by Ableton Link. Okay. Did you have a question? No? All right, let's give a round of applause. Thanks very much.